Do you want the lights off, Jack? No, I just was looking for a microphone unless everybody can hear me fine. Okay, well, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a PowerPoint presentation based on the fact that it's an open <coughs> public hearing. <coughs> And it may be deja vu for most of the council members and the mayor, but I want to give a quick presentation for the public that may be here to take a look at the proposed comp plan changes. Our presentation outline, I'll do the background real quick, and then also comments from the Department of Commerce, because we did receive comments from the Department of Commerce on the proposed changes. So I'll provide a summary of the proposed changes and then a recommendation. And with that, I'll start with the background. The city received a grant from the Department of Commerce in Janu January 2014 for the changes. The scope of work was changed in late 2014 to provide the following deliverables, which were the revisions to the natural environment chapter, chapter three, revisions to chapter eight, transportation, and the revis revision to the city's critical areas maps regarding wetlands. The proposed amendments were reviewed by the Planning Commission in three separate meetings. And the Planning Commission, after their March 24, 2015 meeting, recommended approval to the Council to adopt the revisions of the comprehensive plan. The City did receive five comments from five different agencies, organizations regarding the proposed amendments. These included the American Rivers Associate Organization, the Puyallup River Watership Council, the Puyallup Tribe of Indians, the Tahoma Alabama Society and the Muckleshoot Indian Tribe. And all those have been provided to the Council in previous patterns. Department of Commerce, so we received a letter very late last week, so we have barely got it into your Council packet. But just a summary of the comments. They were positive, they provided there's positive comments regarding the additional language related to Lahar <coughs> in, the, in the conference plan. They thought that was good to have to show the city's commitment for dealing with potential natural disasters. They applauded the city's support of the Lower White River Biodiverse, Biodiversity Management Area being an appendix to the natural environment. They had, they had some concerns regarding the level of service for the West Valley Highway. What that was is that the projected level of service is what they call level of service E, which is about the back worst service you can have, backups of cars and so forth, and our adopted level of service is D, so they were wondering, they were concerned about the difference between our adopted level of service D and what was projected as level of service E for West Valley. And they made two suggestions, so either one, change the level of service for West Valley to E, which would be the simplest way to do it, and may be at this point until things work out with, West, with uh, State Route 167, or come up with a methodology and a time schedule for improvement that would bring West Valley up to D. And at, the, at this time, we'll be looking at taking it to level of service D until things flush out with the new construction of the hot lanes on 167. We also made a suggestion that the city identify standalone proposed multimodal transportation projects such as trail and sidewalks, and we'll discuss that with Public Works and see what we might do on there. The last thing is that the official 60-day <coughs> Department of Commerce 
Department of Commerce comment period expires on June 13, 2015. So after that date, is the, then the city could officially adopt comp plan changes. So real quick, summary of changes for national environment. Uh, the chapter was reformatted to provide, go to single column versus the double column that we now have, removes some goals and policies that are redundant, adds new policies regarding the best available science of all can hazard evacuation routes, adds bio biodiversity section, including goals and policies, and adopts the lower White River Biodiversity Management Stewardship Plan by reference. And this is a copy of the plan. It also provides greater detail regarding existing conditions, provides greater detail for discussion points for policy. Also, the maps have been updated, new soils map that takes into account soils in both King and Pierce County. The new stream and creek map has been provided for the plan to show the typing of streams within the city relative to what our code has for typing of streams and buffers for those particular streams and <coughs> creeks. Also, we changed the name Milwaukee Ditch and now calling it Milwaukee Creek. Provided a new wellhead protection map, and this is the new Lahar hazard map. And we'll have an updated critical areas map that that incorporates the revised city's wetlands map that was completed in May of this year, not May, May, April of this year by the wetlands biologists that we had on our contract. And this is the actual map that was produced. Transportation, again reformat to single palm, removes uh, some goals and policies as being redundant, provided more in the way of discussion statements for different policies. Table 2, which deals with existing roadway levels of service, was updated, as well as eight, tables 8.3 and 8.4, which looked at proje projected LOS levels for 2025 and 2035. Background data has been updated and a new table counts map, which is 8.3, has provided a key to the tables within the comprehensive plan. And this is our transportation, which map in there, urban growth boundary, traffic counts map that was provided to key in with the tables <coughs> in the comprehensive plan. So that's, that's in a nutshell and a, a summary of the proposed changes to the comprehensive plan. Our recommended action is for tonight is open the public hearing and receive comments regarding the proposed plan changes and then continue it to the public hearing to the June 22nd regular council meeting, which will be after the June 13th cutoff day for Department of Commerce. <coughs> Are there questions? Questions? Council Member Kate? I have one question on the items of discussion. There's no mention of carbon credits um, or carbon taxes. Does ways to address you know, air quality and critical uh, area protection? Um, is that something that we should maybe add? Well, that's something that we certainly can examine, but uh, we can examine it uh, next year as part of our comp plan amendment cycle so that staff has the ability to do some more research into that type of information and to policies that could be built upon as this could be generated. My concern is, is that we, when we look at something like this, is that it imposes hardships on people <coughs> who own areas that are going to be defined as critical areas. And suddenly something that was usable not too long ago is it's going to become unusable, and yet there's no incentives, there's no buybacks, there's nothing to help the landowners recover their loss. And because government and courts don't consider it a loss because they own the land, they bought it at a certain price, and if it's still worth at least what they paid for it, then it's it's not a loss when we all know the property values increase and most people buy land with the purpose of using it as an investment tool, uh, whether it's to borrow against or whatever. And if there's nothing in place for them to recover, you know, government just imposes restrictions. And you can't do this. You can't do that. You have to provide wildlife corridors for crying out loud. We need to provide wildlife corridors for raccoons, rats, skunks. Um, coyotes, things like that, and enhance the population of them to the point that it gets beyond the carrying capacity and then we can have a problem. And that's not being addressed in the new um, 
direction that the uh, growth management is forcing us to go, at least if you provide something. We got businesses out there that are producing pollutants that could have the ability to, you know, the governor wants to tax them with the carbon tax. Well, what's he want to do with that money? He wants to use it for something completely different, not to address its actual need. And if we provide carbon credits or a, an avenue for someone to be taxed, and then that money could go to someone who provides the credit, you know, because they grow the trees, which provides the wildlife, we could be killing two birds with one stone and making everyone happy instead of putting all the burden of providing these critical area habitats on a very few minority in our society um, and in our city. Uh, and I just, I'd like to see us, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be in this proposal, but I would definitely like to see it. Yeah, we should certainly could examine that uh, for, for future reference in our 2016 top plan, and we can take, do some research on it and explore that. Okay. And so that we can, we, we could definitely put it up on the planning commission for 2016 work again. That we filled up last year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, any further questions for our council? Okay, if not, I'd like to now open it up for public comment from the audience. Um, as you um, sit your comments, could you please state your name and address the record? Thank you. My name is Linda Burgess, 12822 51st Street East, Edgewood. And I'm a member of the Pierce County Biodiversity Alliance. <coughs> and uh, I wanted to support the recommendation of the Planning Commission uh, to adopt um, the language, the biodiversity language that was uh, presented to you. Uh, regarding the um, uh, goals and policies of protecting biodiversity in the area along the Lower White River. Uh, uh, Mr. Dodge stole a little bit of my thunder because I was going to say that uh, I wanted to point out that uh, various organizations uh, did also support um, that recommendation and he he listed them for you, the Watershed Council, the Trial Tribe of Indians, American Rivers, Tahoma Audubon, Washington's Department of Fish and Wildlife. And I thought that it was very um, significant that the Department of Commerce also highlighted that. But you might not know <coughs> that also um, the planning commissions from the cities of Sumner and Buckley have also recommended to their council to um, adopt very similar language in biodiversity goals for their cities. And, um, and also Auburn, I expect that Auburn will also, they're just a little behind the scheduling. <laughs> um, and this is very important because in order for those corridors to work, um, the area from Buckley through Auburn through Pacific and Sumner must be connecting and, and uh, coordinated. Um, let's see what else did I want to say. Um, also, um, there are some tax advantages, um, tax incentives, tax incentives available, and maybe we should um, talk about that at a, at a later time because I'm not really prepared to talk about it because I don't have the time. Um, I didn't want to. I didn't want to. Um, uh, I'm not going to talk about the benefits of biodiversity and protection because uh, Mr. Dodge does that um, uh, very clearly and very eloquently in your chapter three, and all you need to do is, is read it. But I wanted to address, I think there may have been some questions about why you might want to put the stewardship plan in your appendix. And I just wanted to point out that this, is, um, this document is a really valuable reference document, and that it was written specifically. It's not a um, general biodiversity protection document, but it was written specifically for the communities from Buckley to, to Sumner. And um, if you had, <coughs> had commissioned that to a, um, a consultant, it would cost a lot of money. There were um, hundreds of hours of volunteer work, expert um, biologists, wildlife um, biologists, uh, planning people from uh, counties and states that uh, really worked in order to get to that document. So it is a very valuable document. Also, I think that um, it would be, it's really helpful when you're um,
trying to get grants to do some of the restoration work and involve the community in doing that work, that that is there as an extra boost to your, your being able to get those grants. Also, I want to point out that the plan, the community, the, the, the specific, specific community plan is not going to be written by us. This is going to be written by specific city stakeholders. And you will do as much or as little as you want or think appropriate for that area. And so I guess in conclusion, I hope that you will adopt it. And uh, the Biodiversity Alliance really uh, welcomes and looks forward to working with uh, stakeholders in the city of Pacific and with all the other cities in this, in this area to make that happen. Thank you so much, Joseph. Thank you. <coughs> Is there anyone else on the audience that would like to Yeah. Mark Bounce, three seven four two eight fifty first Avenue South. Palmer. Later on. Um, I have the map that's been prepared for critical areas, and I'm not familiar with anything that happens down here in the valley. But I would like to say I am quite familiar with those areas which have been outlined as steep slope areas. And I'm quite happy to see something that's been formally adopted, or at least almost formally adopted, for taking care of those steep slopes. I don't believe that there should be a, a great deal of development on these steep slopes because I do believe that in the future, those houses and other structures that are built on the steep slopes may in fact uh, turn out to be uh, a liability for those people who sit here in the council. Uh, there should be necessarily some pretty strict rules governing that construction, and I think that this is a nice first step. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I have visual aids. Another is to 
choose native plants around your house or in the riparian areas if you own waterfront um, so that there's plants there that the native plant animals want to eat are available. Um, and as Linda mentioned, there are transfer of development right credits and other uh, tax incentives, so reducing property taxes for people who have property within the biodiversity management planning area. So this is a, an important document and maybe it's a first step in learning how to protect our environment so that future generations do have the oxygen they need. Uh, we do have the carbon sequestering. Uh, we have a way to keep our planet's natural um, resources, our natural systems in balance and providing the resources that we expect, like stormwater management, carbon sequestration, oxygen production, food. Um, so that's one of the reasons I'm supporting this. And you know, it's an emotional thing for me because I grew up looking at a valley that was full of farms and rhubarb and dairy and there weren't too many fire trucks going to the dairy farms. There weren't too many ca trucks of cabbages getting pulled over for going 40 miles an hour on a 25 mile an hour street. So I see recognizing the changes that have happened and then compensating for those, trying to deal with them in a reasonable way, a positive step, not a regressive step. Um, if I could, well, I wouldn't want you all to get smushed in a lahar, but it would be nice if there weren't so many houses in the valley, and it would be nice if there were more ways to get out of the valley. So I support the biodiversity plan, I support the transportation plan, and I do encourage the city to adopt it as it is, there's another round. You can change it if you want. I like the idea of adding carbon credits and offsets for people who grow trees. Um, I'm one of those folks who's grown trees. So is the city. You have a whole hillside of trees on West Hill Passage Park. And boy, the city could use, what, $50, $60 a tree for sequestering carbon, whatever it might turn out to be. So I'm basically in support. And I, I do thank you very much for listening to me once again. Thank you, Jim. Thanks. Is there anyone else that would like to speak on this on the public hearing? Second call for public comment for the public hearing. Okay. Third and final call for comments on the public hearing. Seeing then we will continue this public hearing until June 21st.